Hello, with all the regal splendor, we warmly welcome you to the Royal Family News Channel. Now, let's get to the video. A complete disappointment, citizens in the UK are too astute to squander their hard-earned money on a deceitful book authored by Omid Scobie, a spokesperson for Sussex. It's amusing when you ponder how Omid Scobie, the enthusiastic advocate and mouthpiece for Meghan and Harry, believed he had a guaranteed success with his latest venture. He anticipated substantial success by exposing alleged royal racists within the family, revisiting grievances we've previously heard from Meghan and Harry, and launching a particularly malicious attack on Catherine. However, it appears that UK citizens are too discerning to fall for his cunning tactics. In reality, the book isn't garnering any attention from the public. The Guardian, not typically known for pro-monarchy sentiments, is evidently siding with the royal family over Meghan and Harry's favored mouthpiece, Scooby-Doo. Their article, titled Royal Book at Center of Racism Row Barely Stirs a Ripple on London Streets, highlights the lack of enthusiasm for the book, despite the hype surrounding claims involving two royals discussing Meghan's first child. Very few are rushing to purchase the book, and it's satisfying to witness individuals facing the consequences of their actions, a sentiment that I believe you share as well. It seems like karma is catching up with Scooby-Doo, who took significant risks by revealing the names of alleged royal racists, individuals who may not have made any genuinely racist remarks after all. And you know, despite his claim that it was a mistake, attributing it to the Dutch translator, we're not buying that explanation for a moment. It appears to be a calculated publicity stunt orchestrated by him and Meghan. It was a significant gamble, and Scooby-Doo likely assumed it would boost sales enough to justify the risk. However, it seems Scooby-Doo might have experienced a setback. For centuries, Hatchets on Piccadilly, London's oldest bookstore, has been selling stories about the royal family, including scandals and gossip. Despite the media frenzy surrounding Endgame by Omid Scobie last week, it barely registered with shoppers over the weekend. The book wasn't prominently displayed at the prestigious five-story Hatchets, which holds royal warrants. The sole copy had been set aside upon request. Nearby at Waterstones, approximately 14 copies were stacked near the entrance, but interest was limited there as well. Critics have also given it overwhelmingly negative reviews. The Evening Standard labeled it a complete flop, and the Washington Post remarked that the revelations about the royal family in the book aren't particularly sensational. Despite making front-page headlines with the story about whether members of the royal family discussed Archie's potential skin color before his birth, it wasn't enough to drive substantial sales. The Guardian conducted interviews with individuals who were shopping for books. At Hatchets, many shoppers were unaware of the book, and those who were familiar with it had no intention of purchasing it. One interviewed shopper, Tom Manson, dismissed it as sensationalistic nonsense. He commented that the royal family is in an impossible position regarding the controversy surrounding allegations of remarks about the skin color of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's unborn son. Manson expressed the view that the royal family is in a lose-lose situation, facing criticism regardless of their actions. He emphasized the insignificance of knowing the details of private conversations within the royal family, stating, there are things going on that are much more important than who said what in a conversation in the royal family. It is sensationalism. Similarly, Joe Lancaster, a lawyer, shared Manson's sentiment, stating that there are more important matters to focus on. He questioned the relevance of delving into the specifics of royal conversations, expressing a lack of interest in such sensationalized content. James Gourley, aged 35, declared that he had no intention of purchasing the book. Despite being a supporter of Harry and Meghan, he believed that media coverage and social media had already provided him with sufficient information. Gourley, who expressed admiration for Prince Harry and perceived the couple as decent individuals, questioned the necessity of acquiring additional details through the book. Remarkably, 
it appears that even individuals sympathetic to Meghan and Harry are not endorsing their role in the ongoing racism controversy. This suggests that support for the couple may not necessarily translate into support for the narrative presented in the book. People generally recognize that pondering the potential skin color of an unborn child isn't inherently racist, it's a commonplace aspect of family discussions. This raises confusion about why Harry and Meghan believed it could be used as potent leverage against the royal family, prompting them to disclose the identities of the individuals involved. The reality is, King Charles expressing curiosity about the appearance of his future grandson isn't indicative of racism, rather, it reflects genuine concern and interest in the well-being of the unborn child and the family. Additionally, there is the issue of the racism allegation being revisited, despite being previously discussed in the Oprah Winfrey interview in 2021. One would assume that, given the passage of time, this matter should be considered resolved. Moreover, it's noteworthy that the couple has addressed this allegation on multiple occasions since the initial discussion. During the promotion of his book, Spare, earlier this year, Harry clarified that they never explicitly labeled the royal family as racist, attributing any perceived bias to unconscious factors. For those paying attention, it seems apparent that the couple revisited this narrative out of desperation rather than providing new insights. Scooby-Doo was well aware that there was nothing particularly intriguing in the book. He understood that this was the culmination of his efforts. Whether Harry and Meghan both endorsed this endeavor is uncertain, but it's likely that Meghan, at least, was involved. Harry's stance remains uncertain. The Guardian also encountered individuals from Victoria, British Columbia, who, although unaware of the book, expressed a desire to read it. They voiced pride in Prince Harry and Meghan in Canada and deemed the controversy over remarks involving racism or unconscious bias as absurd. One interviewee, of Chinese and Danish heritage, noted that her relatives had similarly discussed her appearance before birth, viewing it as curiosity rather than racism. According to reports, it was challenging for the observer to locate individuals who had read or intended to read the book. However, they did find one person, Amy Lund, 62, from Salt Lake City, Utah, who had purchased the book on Audible and considered herself a fan. She found the book insightful, providing new perspectives on the relationship between King Charles and Prince William, and expressed her enjoyment of it. Amy's husband, James Lawn, 62, criticized the media for its harsh coverage of Harry and Meghan. He believed that Meghan had the potential to enhance Britain's global reputation and felt that the British media had been unjust. He remarked, she could have been a wonderful asset for the Commonwealth, and we are astonished that this opportunity hasn't been embraced. Frankly, it speaks volumes that a considerable effort was required to locate even a single couple interested in and supportive of this book. It seems to be a collection of sensationalism penned to generate income for a journalist whose career is struggling. In the lead-up to the book's release, there were claims that it would be a groundbreaking expose on the royal family, unveiling information they purportedly wished to keep hidden. However, the reality is that the book has fallen flat, it offers no new revelations, merely rehashing the same grievances we've heard repeatedly. Meghan and Harry have been estranged from the royal family for an extended period, meaning they lack any fresh insights to share. The public is growing weary of their persistent complaints. Despite Scabies and Meghan's attempts to tarnish the royal family's image, it seems they haven't achieved their intended impact. King Charles, Princess Catherine, Prince William, and Queen Camilla remain unaffected by the book's malicious accusations. Catherine Meyer, author of Charles, The Heart of a King, expressed skepticism about the book's immediate impact on the royal family. She remarked, I don't think this moves the story on. People who believe there was racism will merely see this as confirmation. And people who think there was a setup by the Sussexes will see this as further evidence of their imaginations. I foresee this book marking the definitive end of the relationship between Harry, Meghan, and the rest of the royal family.
As for Scooby-Doo's career, it appears he may need a backup plan, as it's unlikely anyone will approach him to write anything in the future. The question remains, Megan, Scabies, and Harry, was it truly worth it? That's it for the video. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and share with those interested. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest content. Thanks for joining us, have a great day, and stay tuned for upcoming videos.